taking notes in dental school can be very different depending on which university you go to or which college you go to, but I'm going to show you the quickest, most effective note-taking system regardless of where you study. And don't worry, I will be going through my own notes a little later on in this video, so if you want a copy of them, just let me know and I will send them your way. So a lot of you might be thinking, well, note-taking, how hard can that be? Surely I'm not doing it wrong. And well, that's precisely my point. You want to be doing it the most efficient way, the most time efficient way, because understanding and taking notes is the longest part of the studying process. Obviously, getting good grades and studying is broken down into understanding the information and then also recalling and remembering the information. There's also other stuff involved as well. So make sure you check out my how I study in dental school video because I'll break down everything in that video. So to start with, you obviously want to make sure that you're not taking notes on absolutely everything. There is this common misconception that, for example, if you're learning all about this disease X, that you should go through every single resource to get information on this. But that's a very time inefficient way of doing it. What you have to figure out is what's exactly on your exams and what kind of questions are they asking. There's no point learning about every single management option and all the complications and X, Y, Z if they're only asking about clinical presentations, for example. So how a patient presents, do they have a rational inside of their face or something like that? Is there a specification? Is there a certain point where you're like, okay, that's enough information? Do you have like good resources where you know, okay, this goes into it in enough depth that this should cover everything that I need to understand? And also what type of content you're learning will depend on if you're doing essay-based questions or if you're doing multiple choice questions. So obviously with note-taking, you want to start off by breaking it down into the different tree of knowledge. So the different like headings. So for example, I have perio, I have ortho, oral med, prosto, you know, all of those kind of things. And I'll show you a little bit over here as well. But the thing is that um, I go into this in my other video as well, that sometimes, you know, just having the headings are enough. Sometimes what a lot of YouTubers tell you to do is that they want you to categorize every single piece of information and every subheading but that's a lot of the time really hard to do when you don't know what the content of that information is and so what I recommend is just having the main heading points and then afterwards when you're going through the information you can subcategorize them then because you're going to be moving them around anyways because it takes you absolutely ages to just you know figure out where things go if you don't know what's inside the content so now learning information this is the part where everything interlinks together and meshes together this this is that point where you know where everything just clicks and everything you understand what's going on so the way that I gauge my understanding is if I was thrown any question on this would I be able to answer it without any flaws in my logic and also is this based on logic or is this based on memorization you really want to get like a core first principles understanding of this concept because that would allow you to just kind of link things together and also understand why, for example, they show up with a rash on their face or why there are ulcers, there's reasoning behind everything and there's a process and mechanism and there are things inside topics that just link together and make it easier to understand each part. So the way that you understand information is not going from one textbook and doing it back to front. It's kind of like finding the chapters in each multiple textbooks and you know YouTube videos and articles and stuff like that and kind of reading it through and processing the information and whatever it takes to make you understand. A lot of the time YouTube videos are really good as well but yeah you want to get that to click. I often say as well that at this point don't worry about making notes and you know, that comes later once you have that categorization and understanding that core understanding, because at that point you'll be able to make more specific questions that link things together. If at this point you feel like, you know what, drawing a diagram would really help, then, you know, by all means do that. That's really helpful as well in just you know, figuring out where everything goes and, you know, how everything links together. <laughs> I keep saying like how everything links together and stuff, but that's really, really a core principle in understanding. And you know, the people who are at the top of your class are most likely thinking in this way. If it's subconscious or not and why I'm hammering this part home is you know when you understand the why behind the reason then it's much easier for you to recall the information and at the end of the day you only want to do the understanding part once you want to do the recalling part multiple times and you want to rely on that and your space repetition your questions your Anki your past paper questions stuff like that to carry you through the revision you don't want to have to keep going back to this understanding phase because that would just be very time inefficient and so yeah, although this process is very long, it ensures that you have a very thorough first principles understanding, especially at dental school. It's one of those things like, it's actually quite finite, the amount of stuff that you're gonna be learning. You know, there's only a certain amount of things in the head and neck that you can learn. There's a lot of information, let's be honest, but you're gonna be learning the same stuff over the five years. It's just a deeper understanding of it every single time. So if you already have like a good core principle of the main concepts, then you're gonna be smashing for dental school as well as a lot of other careers 
libraries are structured in the same way out there as well. And so when you make your notes, you're going to be categorizing them. And so obviously when I say notes, I mean questions. And when I say questions, I mean, you know, categorizing each of these things in under subheadings and then under that breaking each point of information into separate questions. There are some caveats. So first of all, why you want to separate them into individual pieces of content? Because for example, if you have, okay, tell me everything about disease X on one flashcard, it's going to be really impossible to, you know, be targeted. And, you know, it's different from being asked, what are the signs and symptoms? What are the management? You're being asked one specific thing. If you're being asked everything about a disease, it's more likely that you're going to be, that you're going to figure out about a part of that information that you are supposed to recall. Also, it's not actually testing your knowledge. It's actually testing your memorization on that spectrum because you have to learn all of the different parts of that disease like okay mechanism have I gone through management have I gone through treatment options and all of that kind of stuff so yeah what you want to do is you want to break them down into the smallest possible points so for example if we're doing diseases I would do signs and symptoms then I would do cause differential diagnosis treatment options management drugs and oral implications all of that kind of stuff so that's how i would structure it but there is a caveat to this so maybe there are two aspects of this that really link in very well together for example you know explaining um, a disease pathway or a mechanism of action so maybe there's you know point a b c d and e but you know instead of asking what is point a explain point B, explain point C, that's breaking it down to the very smallest pieces of information. But actually, I think sometimes it's more helpful to be like, okay, explain the processes of this whole thing, and then you go through A, B, C, D, and E, because they all will interlink with each other. This isn't always the case, but sometimes it is. And in these cases, I think it's helpful to have that all in one question. And when I say break it down to the smallest possible bit, then you're thinking, okay, so all of this interlinking and understanding was a waste of time. And not really, because what I would do is I would actually understand underneath the question, so for example if it was signs and symptoms, then I would do just an extra piece of information which would like kind of link it back to the causation or whatever it is, whatever linking factors there are. And although my question is not directly asking me about this, if for example I'm like oh my god I cannot remember the answer to this question, when I look at the other side of the question I will be like oh okay so you know this is why and it kind of triggers that pathway in your memory to kind of trigger you to remember that understanding like all that stuff understanding that you did and it will all come back to you and finally also i think that pictures and diagrams really 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 help so especially for diseases it's really important to just see the clinical like presentation of it because a lot of the time in the exams we have you know pictures of like a mouth and you know ulcers and this and that so you really need to be able to identify these things second thing is i think diagrams are so so helpful so for each of the cranial nerves i had like a little tiny like like flow chart kind of thing that i made for myself literally had not seen this anywhere else but i just kind of you know understood the information and once I was at that point then I could draw out you know in a way that made sense to me it might not make sense to other people and it definitely did not make sense to other people but for me even in the exam I could literally draw out the whole thing I could figure out every single branch and what it innovates and stuff like that so I just found that really helpful so you know diagrams even if it takes you a little bit of extra time to make that diagram if it interlinks loads of things together or explains a very complex situation or even if it's just very basic but you keep forgetting it I think they're really helpful and invaluable obviously it depends on your learning style but there's also a lot of scientific research to show that actually learning cells is just a load of BS. <laughs> so like, you know, visual, auditory, the likelihood is that you're actually a combination of all of these things. So you know what, give it a try. So here I will show you like the headings, the top headings that I have for my dentistry notes. And then underneath each heading, I have sub toggles. So toggle is how you hide a question and answer. And that's the way that I go through it. So you have like all these questions. And then underneath that, you have subcategories. So for example, under periodontal surgery, there are many different types. There's osseous surgery, GTR, regeneration, something, something surgery. There's like loads of different types. And so those are subheadings underneath that. And then underneath that is just directly the questions and I'll show you how I go through these in a second. So the way that I categorize my questions is twofold. So first of all it's in Notion. You obviously know the great toggle feature which is like this little triangle that basically you can have your question at the front and when you open it then you can see the answer and that's brilliant because one it just keeps my notes very tidy. It just keeps everything in one place. It's just nice to look at. It's just 
really easy to use as well and two though there is one problem is that it's not randomized it's all in one order which has its pros and cons and i'll get to that in a second so i also use anki on the side as well anki is my everyday go-to it's the way that i keep on top of all the information that i've already learned and how i prevent from forgetting all of it obviously there are times where i'm like oh my god i literally cannot remember what this card was like it's slipped my mind there are going to be times that you have to come back to them but when you do anki on a daily basis you're less likely to have those situations where you're like you know what I can't remember this at all. So Anki is going to be my daily thing because I love the fact that you can, you know, randomize it. So you're not getting everything about one disease, you're getting every random disease and you can randomize it and choose how you want to make up your decks and stuff like that. So I think that's really helpful. And then I also have the Notion. So the Notion I use on an Excel spreadsheet and I got this idea from Ali Abdal. Basically you color code it depending on your weakness. So the last time I went through, for example, medical emergencies and the drugs associated with it. So then I can go through that and I could be like, okay, you know what, actually, I'm not very sure on these kind of things. I think I definitely need to go over them again. And so at that point, when I'm coming up to the exams or if I have free time at some point, then I would go through those weaker areas or the higher yield areas and then go tackle it for like that. Because I go through this in my other video, but not every subject should be studied equally. Like there's no point because some subjects might be harder, some subjects might be easier. So yeah, it's really important to figure out what's your weaknesses and work on those first. And then obviously I use past paper questions and stuff like that and resources and all of that kind of stuff i'll go through in my how i study video otherwise this video will be a million minutes long so yeah make sure you check that one out and then also if you don't like any of these ways there is also an old school method that i used to do in first and second year which really carried me through all of my university like exams and stuff like that and it was really good and what i used to do is i used to get a word document i used to make two columns and then break it down and so basically on one side i'd have number one and then I'd have the question and then on the other side I'd have number one and then I'd have the answer and basically what I would do is I'd print this out and then I'd fold it and then I'd go through the questions like that. For us a lot of our exam questions came directly from the lectures so I really had to make sure I was paying attention in lectures and stuff like that and then each lecture I tried to put onto one sheet of A4. Obviously it didn't always happen like that but it was just so satisfying to know like you know the whole of the lecture was in this one page and then you can have like a folder of all your lectures and stuff like that so I think that's a really helpful way and you know if it's physical then you can maybe even tick it on the side be like okay this one was easy this one was not like the traffic code system you know green yellow red as well if that's helpful so yeah that's something else you can try out but yeah obviously there are other things that are important to think about when you're studying like your study intervals you know maintaining focus your environment all of those kind of things so make sure you check out that how i study in dental school video if you want to know more otherwise i really hope you like this video if you do like this kind of content i have so much productivity content as well as what it's like to be a dental student as well as how to get into dental school and so much more so make sure you check out those videos subscribe and turn on the notification bell and i'll see you in the next one bye